at the end of the session. We can uh, uh, now go ahead uh, with the first, uh, uh, our first speaker, uh, Professor uh, Akitsugu Kawashima. We are uh, very grateful uh, to have you here, Professor, today. Uh, just a few words uh, uh, of introduction. Uh, Professor Kawashima is uh, currently uh, director of the Department of Neurosurgery at St. Lucas International Hospital in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, he, uh, before this position, he uh, covered uh, positions uh, in many hospitals uh, in uh, Japan, uh, and he also uh, spent time uh, uh, not only in Helsinki, as uh, we heard uh, with Professor Juha Ernest Niemi doing also live surgeries, but also at the Charité University Hospital in Berlin, Germany. Uh, his uh, main specialty is vascular neurosurgery. He has a, a personal neurosurgical uh, experience in uh, over uh, 1,400 uh, bypass surgeries, uh, and more than 1,000 cerebral aneurysms, and then, of course, uh, CEA and AVMs. Uh, he published uh, a number of papers in international peer-reviewed journals and also book chapters. Uh, so today, uh, Professor Kawashima will talk uh, about uh, EC, IC bypass, basis and variations, so a very interesting and also difficult, I would say, uh, topic. Uh, so, Professor Kawashima, uh, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Professor Ferretti, and thank you, Professor Kato, Yokato. And now I sh share my slide. Can you see my slide? Yes, Professor. Okay. So, uh, it's a great honor to be invited this participate in this uh, great course. I'll briefly talk about the uh, basic technique and how to try for ECIC bypass and the uh, variation of the bypass. The first STMC bypass was performed in 1967 by Professor Yasajiro. This technique was adapted not only to ischemia, but also to complex aneurysm. There are much difference of the development of the graft between uh, cases, institutes, and surgeon skills. I'm not saying. Of course, demand is one of the important factors, but it may also be according to the uh, procedures. Quality of procedures are very essential. So there are my cases. I'd like to talk from my experience I obtained. I'll show you, uh, firstly, the graft preparation, next, recipient selection and anastomosis, finally, variation of ECIC bypasses. So uh, the, the key of the graft preparation is avoiding graft damage and to keep graft course natural. It's very important. And skin incision uh, uh, for carrying the uh, skin travel. And uh, I usually do double bypasses and the posterior Part of the skin incision is on the parietal branch of the STA, and then add the uh, incision anteriorly, dissect the uh, parietal branch of the STA at first, then the frontal branch is uh, from the guardial side. The careful preparation of the grafts, avoiding the intimal damage and the mechanical spasm. And a skeletonized graft is better than the pedicle graft. I mean, the uh, connective tissue, the less connective tissue uh, around the graft is better, I think. It's, uh, there are uh, some papers from the uh, 
vascular surgeries. And one more natural graft course is very, very important. So first, I show you the uh, video of the uh, dissection of the uh, graft. Now, <clears throat> this is uh, a case of the a pediatric myomere disease. And now, now I cut the, uh, on the parietal branch of the STA. Usually I do the, uh, in my left hand, uh, hand uh, have a uh, bipolar and the right hand have a uh, scissors. And I use like this, dissected with the uh, bipolar and the scissors. After dissecting the parietal branch of the STA, the uh, skin uh, flap was uh, refracted and frontal branch of the STA was dissected from the garial side. So I put the uh, a uh, mark on the uh, graft, avoid to twist of the, of this. This is a case of the STA and the ACA bypass, and uh, this graft long graft is like this. But the uh, graft course, natural graft course, is very important. So, postoperative angiography shows the whole frontal lobe are uh, supplied from the uh, graft, both HCA and the MCA territories. I'll show you the arteriosclerotic case. You can see this is a cerebrum vein and this is a inferior part of the M4. I select this as the uh, recipient artery. And this is the graft, but the, uh, the, this graft is, the shape is a little bit uh, not good. So I cut this graft. The shape like this is better. Thinking about this, Graft course is very important to obtain the uh, good blood, um, blood supply. And next, I'll show you the, uh, the how select of the recipient artery. My strategy is to Big blood, big blood supply to the brain surface as much as possible. To get the goal, a big blood flow route is needed. So a big size recipient artery and better blood flow is a better recipient artery. I mean, uh, blood flow uh, until gradually is the better because the uh, uh, blood supply from the graft is uh, a little uh, uh, retrogradually to the uh, from the M4 to M M2. So blood supply is uh, uh, very huge to whole uh, MCA territory. And uh, I image the perfusion area because uh, 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 as a, a patient, uh, the uh, lack of the perfusion area is uh, different. I, I think the front, uh, anterior part or posterior part of the frontal row or parietal region or temporal region. And uh, I, I said, I usually use a, a double uh, bypasses. So I can use uh, uh, two grafts. So 
depend on the uh, lack of the uh, perfusion area. I select the, uh, for example, one, one graph to the front frontal lobe, and the next one is the parietal, parietal region. Or the, uh, the temporal uh, blood, blood flow, preoperative blood flow uh, in the temporal lobe is not so bad. But uh, frontal lobe is very, very uh, poor. So in that case, I select the uh, recipient artery on, in the anterior part of the frontal lobe and the posterior part of the frontal lobe. It depends on the patient. And the balance between the surgeon's skill and the uh, condition is uh, very important. So uh, I, I mean the uh, condition of the anastomosis means the surgical field and the recipient artery, the condition of the surgical field and the condition of the recipient artery. It's uh, the surgical field means a uh, uh, working space, depth, narrowing, or the uh, uh, fixation of the CSF or deep side or the uh, breathing or so. The condition of the recipient artery is the size of the recipient artery, scotic change or not, angle, thickness, or tortures. Or it's uh, if the uh, the good recipient artery is uh, in the uh, deeps in the sulcus. It's uh, you you can select this uh, recipient artery if your skill is good, but uh, if not, you you should uh, select the on the surface of the recipient artery. It's uh, the uh, balance is uh, important. And anastomosis, sorry. Uh, for, for the uh, uh, small uh, recipient artery, for example, the uh, pediatric myeloma disease or so, to successful uh, making the bypass for such a small recipient artery, devices are very, very important. After clamping the uh, arteriotomy, the recipient artery will collapse, and it's hard to detect the orifice like this. So in such cases, we introduce a silicon um, colored stent, which is blue colored and very soft, and it helps us to make it visible, shape the collapse vessels, and the prevent the suturing the contralateral roll. And also, we introduce the ultra small micro needle. The ordinary size of the 10 0 is some millimeter in length. And 80, from 80 to uh, 100 micromillimeter in diameter. But we uh, introduce a, a very small size. It's a, a 2.5 millimeter in length and 70 micro, micrometer in, diamet in, in, length, uh, in diameter. It's a, a very good for the, uh, such a very small size of the recipient artery. So, and uh, uh, technically, a steady suturing and, and the expanding orifice is very important. To reach this uh, goal, making good visible and adjusting the uh, orifice of the recipient artery to the donor is very important. And to uh, avoiding to suturing the contralateral wall, keeping the needle chip up is uh, essential. And uh, uh, stitching the needle through the all layers uh, vertically is very important. Uh, many, uh, I, uh, many young neurosurgeons, uh, it's, it's 
very difficult for very uh, many neuro, uh, young neurosurgeons. We teach, we teach them, uh, it's very important. Needle, uh, particularly uh, stitching the needle through the whole layers. And the uh, suturing with loose stitches like this, it, uh, it's help to expanding the orbits. If you stitch, uh, suturing the uh, many stitches, uh, the office was shrinked. But of course, uh, uh, oozing uh, after the decramping, uh, there are no oozing after decramping the, uh, uh, after the cramp. But the, uh, too much stitches uh, is make the, uh, shrink the office, so balance is important. So I'll show you the video of uh, setting and the anastomosis. So I set the uh, graft and the, now making the uh, office of the recipient artery like this and the cut the edge to shape round the preparation of the uh, recipient artery is very uh, it's a key not to damage the uh, recipient artery coagulate and cut of the small branches And the press the stay suturing needle because the because the clip uh, cramp the uh, recipient artery. Now the I cut adding the uh, cut of the uh, orifice to. Uh, uh, much uh, the same between the uh, orifice, between the uh, recipient artery and the uh, graft. So I show you the video of the uh, suturing. Stitch the vertically of the needle like this. In many cases, four stitches at one side. With visible and avoiding the suturing the contralateral wall. And before tiring the old suturing, we, the blue colored stent are out. Then tie the suturing. So I show you the angiographical result of bypass function six months after operation. We define, define the uh, angiographical evaluation like this, uh, more than two, two thirds of MCA territory are extensive and less than one third are poor uh, between two thirds and one third uh, moderate. So 
uh, many of uh, all, almost all cases are extensive. So next, I'll show you the uh, variation of the uh, biopsies. Uh, I provided a new technique of STA, ACA, and MCA bypass for cases of myeloma disease. The indication is uh, uh, less uh, 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 low CBF in the ACA territory and the MCA territory, including the ACA territory. And the, uh, Lower extremely uh, t, uh, deficit for the ischemic. So, uh, the section one branch of the STA are uh, about 10 centimeter for long graft and making two separate craniotomy for MCA territory and the ACA territory. The key is passing the long graft under the dura like this, for the natural graft course. So this is a bilateral uh, uh, lack of the SGA, uh, uh, decrease of the CBF with a uh, symptomatic bilateral uh, more and more cases. The uh, right side is uh, was uh, operated uh, with uh, STA simple STA MCA double bypasses. A contralateral left side are uh, STA MCA and the SCA bypass. The uh, in some cases the SCA territory was supplied by the uh, MCA from the uh, little gradually, uh, like this. But the directory supply from the long graft for the ACA is better than the, uh, like this. So the next is the uh, high flow bypass. Uh, the, uh, Uh, the aim of the high flow bypass is the replacement of the HGA or the uh, other large vessel to supply high amount of blood flow. So the, uh, you, not so uh, big craniotomy is not needed. The skin incision is uh, only like this. So I, uh, in my case, uh, I uh, do the uh, high flow bypass with STA MCA bypass for insurance. So the skin incision is uh, uh, on the parietal branch of the STA and the, at the anterior like the STA MCA bypass. Uh, the cran craniotomy were, was made not so closely to the terior different from the creeping, no need. And we tunnel from the neck to the craniotomy edge below the zygomatic arch. And we pass the uh, Gore-Tex uh, artificial graft in the tunnel, then press the vein graft inside the Gore-Tex artificial graft, like this. The uh, Gore-Tex graft, graft was passed uh, between this uh, craniotomy and the uh, neck under the zygomatic arch. Uh, the graft is pressed under the zygomatic arch and the uh, mandibular through the uh, artificial graft, uh, Gore-Tex graft. This is post-operative. Uh, 3D image, the, uh, the uh, hypergraft is like this. 
this uh, artificial graft was uh, avoid the kink of the uh, graft in the muscles. So I show you the uh, video of the high flow bypass. This is a, a left side. At first, uh, we open the cerebrum fissure, and this is a uh, uh, first we do the STA M2 bypass for insurance. Then we anastomosis between the uh, vein graft and the M2 using the 9-0 propylene PN. So continuously suturing. And move to the neck and suturing between the uh, graft and the uh, neck. Uh, is the origin of the ECA with a six zero flooring. So Surgical field is very simple, as no need so big granulotomy. Then uh, I show you the STA SCA bypass for uh, the main indication is for uh, ischemia or uh, vertebral vaginal insufficiency with uh, Vajra or the bilateral VA uh, occlusive disease. Uh, in some cases, uh, these techniques are adapted to the uh, acute flow replacement for cases of the uh, aneurysm. This is a case of SCA origin large aneurysm. I did the, uh, I do this operation in the uh, live surgery. I'll show you the video. The making skin incision on the parietal branch of the STA for the graft. This dissect, uh, this dissecting the uh, STA about nine centimeter. We mark the uh, blue line to prevent uh, tortures of the graft. Now temporal muscle were cut. And pull it forward. You can see this, uh, this is the root of the zygoma. And we cut the muscle for the root of the graft. Make the craniotomy with two bar holes, about six centimeter in diameter. We drill the temporal base, but no need that uh, skull base technique. Just, just, just it. And this is very helpful for us. This uh, cotton, uh, uh, this uh, cotton pillow to prevent the uh, big uh, retraction of the temporal rope. And cutting the uh, tent widely is very very important because the uh, uh, surgical field of the uh, anastomosis is under. The the below the uh, tent. And uh, we 
use a zero home below the recipient artery to up the surgical field. And preparing the uh, office of the graft. Uh, I don't use the uh, scalp base technique, very simple subtemporal approach, but the uh, surgical field is, uh, is good. And using the 9-0 blueprint frame, using a con uh, continuous, continuous suturing method, So the clamp of the uh, graft after making this bypass, I attack the aneurysm. Okay. So I show you the chips again. The temporal base should be dulled, flattery, but no need for mastoidectomy, such as a scalp base technique. And the minimum using the specula to prevent brain damage is very important for su such a subtemporal approach. So CSF door nudge and using the uh, cotton pillow a very effective for it. The surgical field of anastomosis is below the tent. So opening the tent widely helps to make a good working space for anastomosis. Uh, there are small tips to making successful deep anastomosis. Uh, one is elevation of the recipient artery using a silicon color stent to make visible and prevent the suture in the contralateral roll. And the running suture is, fa is faster. This is a paper of the uh, uh, published in neurosurgery uh, 2017. Uh, this is for surgical to me treatment of the P2 and aneurysm. Previously, reconstruction of the P3 was reported as OA PCA via occipital interhemispheric fissure with divided craniotomy from the manipulation of the aneurysm or, or the uh, combined the endovascular approach. But this Simple subtemporal approach, we we can achieve the uh, trap of the aneurysm and making the bypass. Uh, the P P C the uh, surgical press of uh, making a bypass of the P three is a little bit difficult. Uh, the uh, angle of the uh, recipient artery is. Uh, uh, not flat, but we, we can do. Uh, we can uh, uh, we can do the uh, anterior part of the uh, P3. Uh, we can do via uh, subtemporal approach. So a bypass is very effective and uh, powerful to achieve a suitable surgical effect. But there are uh, some chips. So again, graft preparation, avoiding the intimal damage and the mechanical spasm, 
and very important of the natural graft course, keeping the nat uh, natural graft course. And for recipient artist selection, we, you, we select the big size recipient artery and the, uh, thinking the uh, perfusion areas and the balance of the surgical skills and the anastomosis condition. And for anastomosis, making good visible and adjusting the orifice between the uh, graft and the recipient artery and the loose stitches to making the, uh, uh, making the uh, uh, big orifice is the key to success of the uh, good anastomosis. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kawashima, for this wonderful presentation about uh, ECAC bypass uh, techniques. Uh, I think we can uh, open the discussion. I see already uh, Dr. Hari raised his hand. So please, Dr. Hari. Uh, uh, th thank you, Professor Kawashima, for the excellent tips to young neurosurgeons. Uh, I have uh, two doubts. So, uh, uh, first, my doubt is: uh, When do you do? Do you do any post-operative angiogram after the bypass surgery? And if you do, after how many months do you do? And yes. my second. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. And uh, my second question is: uh, uh, Do you do any CFD in the bypass? Have you uh, any time uh, done computational fluid dynamics in the bypass after doing the bypass? To so, assess sorry. the patent bypass. So, sorry, uh, second question. I, I uh, uh, have you done any times uh, used to CFD in measuring the bypass patency? CSD. C C C F D. He's asking about computational fluid dynamics. Oh, okay. Uh, we uh, do the uh, postoperative angiography. Uh, six months after operation for every cases. And uh, uh, CFD, uh, we, we, we don't, we don't uh, uh, evaluate the CFD. Just uh, MRI and uh, six months after uh, angiography. Yes. yes, thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. And uh, sorry, sorry, one more. Yeah. Uh, in, in some cases, uh, you, you know, the uh, hyperperfusion syndrome after operation. Yes. So, yes, uh, only about the two, two or three percent cases uh, uh, with breathing, according to the uh, hyperperfusion syndrome. So, in, in my institute, all cases uh, spect were done just after operation, day zero. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay. it's it's uh, it's uh, of course it's depend on the uh, institute. But the uh, the problem of the uh, postoperative hyperperfusion syndrome is uh, a big problem for us. So the question is how, how do you treat it once you find the hyperperfusion uh, uh, area? Yes, uh, thank you, Professor Kato. The uh, very focal hyperperfusion, hyperperfusion is uh, very dangerous. Uh, for, uh, for example, uh, the myoma cases, uh, middle ages, and the very severe uh ischemic cases is a uh, uh, very risky risky and uh, uh i or i also uh evaluate the uh interoperative uh graft blood flow uh you you know shabir flow flow meter uh i uh measure the uh blood blood flow of the graft the amount of the uh, blood flow is uh, one of the uh, risk factor. I mean, the, uh, more than 
70 milliliter per minute. Over the 70 milliliter per minute, but flow is a uh, uh, risk of the possible hyperperfusion. So, uh, uh, in some cases, I keep the uh, sedation uh, after operation to prevent the uh, hyperperfusion syndrome. So, do you, do you start the treatment during the surgery if you find over 70 millimeter per minute? Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Professor Kato. So, in very severe cases, I start to uh, uh, using the uh, labunar chopental during the surgery. Thank you so much. Thank you. I see Dr. Mayank raised his hand. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Professor, for the uh, very nice presentation. I have one question. Uh, what is your opinion on uh, using a combined uh, method for Moya Moya disease that is both uh, STMC bypass plus uh, EDAS or EDAMS? Uh, do you use it or what is your recommendation? Thank you very much. It, it's a very good question. And the, uh, in Japan, it's controversial. In, in my opinion, in adult cases, good double anosmosis, we, we can do the good double anosmosis. There are no need to do the uh, uh, combined, you mean the uh, either EMS or so. But uh, for uh, small young pediatric cases, uh, I think it's needed to uh, combine indirect bypass, not only the direct, with indirect bypass. It's my opinion because uh, I, I said, uh, I, uh, I do the, uh, post-operative angiography six months after operation in all cases. And I check the all cases in my all, uh, more than same 1,000 pa patient I checked. So uh, in adult cases for to do the double bypass, no need the uh, indirect, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. If may I ask? About yes, me? Raja, of course, please. Thank you. First of all, uh, Kaushima Sensei, thank you very much for coming here and sharing your this rich experience of more than 1,400 cases of uh, bypass. We are extremely grateful to you. Uh, first question is a clarification that uh, in the ECIC bypass, you showed an incision on the hand. And you, if I heard by mistake, you said venous graft. Was it a venous graft or a radial artery graft? Thank you very much. It's yes, this problem is also, uh, also controversial in Japan. I, I think it depends on the uh, uh, institute or the uh, teachers. <laughs> in, in my institute, uh, we the vein glass is fast because just uh, it's preferred to uh, incision of uh, the leg is better than the <laughs> uh, hand. And uh, but I think the handling of the graft, the radial artery is, is uh, easier than the uh, saphenous vein graft because the uh, wall of the graft is thin of the radial uh, sinna of the uh, radial artery graft. So in my case, uh, a very simple uh, EC uh, M2 bypass, a very simple high flow bypass, a saphenous brain is enough. But the, for example, the high flow bypass to the uh, PCA territory, the surgical field is very narrow. So the uh, saphenous vein graft is bigger than the radial artery. So in such case, uh, I select the 
uh, uh, laterally graphed. And the, for uh, ACA, the bypass for the ACA territory using the uh, uh, graft. I select the radial artery graft because the interhemispheric fissure is very narrow. So uh, the big graft is uh, uh, some uh, differences. So, sorry, some uh, uh, difficult. So I use, uh, I select the uh, radial graft and the, uh, it's a better, I think. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you very much. Other questions for from the audience for Professor Kawashima? If there are no other questions, I want to thank Professor Kawashima very much for this wonderful lecture and also for the uh, very instructive discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we can move on before uh, uh, giving the floor to my co-moderator, uh, Professor Ishu Bishnoya, I would like to complete the introduction of the newcomers at Fujita uh, University. Uh, Dr. Cabulo, are you uh, online? Can you briefly introduce yourself? I don't know if there is also Dr. Simon connected. Okay, uh, my name is Cabulo. I'm a neurosurgeon in Lubumbashi, Democratic Republic of Congo. I'm working at the tertiary hospital, Jason Sendwe Provincial Hospital. I trained in Zimbabwe under Professor Kalangu, and uh, I finished my training in um, early 2020. Thank you so much. And I'm very happy to be here to learn again and close to Professor Yoko Kato. Uh, she's my professor. I met her more than five times. So on the congresses, different congresses. So today uh, I'm very happy to learn again with her, uh, close to her. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cabulo, and welcome yes. uh, to this in, to this family. And maybe uh, you also have uh, Dr. Simon there. Yes, Mr. Simon is there. Yes, okay. uh, my name is Simon. Uh, I'm a nurse. Uh, uh, I'm working at the Center for Trauma and Surgery in Lubumbashi. I'm also a PhD in public health. Uh, I'm an associate professor at the University of Lubumbashi. It is a great pleasure for me to be here to learn more uh, uh, from uh, Professor Yoko and the entire team. Thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, Simon. Thank you very much. Uh, Okay, so um, uh, Professor Ishu Bishnoi, uh, I don't see him. Ishu, are you connected? He's connected, I think. Not connected, yeah, I, I think he's momentaneously not connected. So I uh, can have the pleasure uh, to introduce uh, our next uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Dishod. Uh, Mamad Aliyev, uh, who is a neurosurgeon uh, uh, in, uh, in Uzbekistan. Uh, he is also a secretary uh, of the Uzbekistan Association of Neurosurgeons. Uh, he is working in Tashkent, the capital uh, of Uzbekistan. He is also a former fellow uh, at the Fujita Bantane Hospital and a dear friend of uh, personally, me and also of uh, all the other friends uh, at Fujita. So today, uh, Dilshod will uh, talk about uh, brain mapping in non-dominant hemisphere, uh, future perspectives and review of the literature. So a very intriguing uh, uh, title. Uh, thank you, Dilshod, for being here and accepting our invitation to talk. Thank you so much, Alberto. Thank you, dear. Uh, all participants, Professor Cato, and everybody who is participating in this uh, evening webinars of scientific event of neurosurgeons. So I just share my slides. So, <clears throat> Continuing the talk uh, of uh, awake surgery from the last week, so I'm going to be very chronic <laughs> in the lecture. 
So um, brain mapping in non-dominant right hemisphere. Uh, here I'm in Nagoya University, I've started uh, researching the literature about the mapping of um, both dominant and non-dominant hemispheres of the brain. And so I came up with uh, uh, several interesting uh, articles. So I just wanted to share with, with you. Um, so this is our, my plan, how I'm going through the, so, um, uh, basic goal of uh, neuro oncology, as we know, it's uh, providing a patient long-term, long-term survival and preserving the function, the functionality of the cortex and both subcortical structures of the brain, which is obviously, uh, achieved, uh, through the uh, implementation of awake surgery or uh, mapping of the brain cortex and subcortical regions in awake state of the patient. So historically, it has began in 18th century by the experiments of Robert Bathalo, who has done his first experimental uh, mapping on the patient's cortex using the Faradic electrical currents. And then uh, Dr. Uh, Victor Horsley in later 1886, localizing the epileptic focus with cortical stimulation. And then Wilder Penfield, who is a, a great a surgeon and researcher, has done also the analogous uh, experiments on, under local anesthesia. And we know the uh, Dr. Broadman in 19th century, so great scientist who has uh, done the cytoarchitectonic map of the cerebral cortex. So, <clears throat> Uh, cerebral dominance. Uh, there has been even uh, such opinions in the 18th uh, century speculation uh, that hemisphere might be associated to distinct minds. Um, Carl Friedrich Burdach uh, in 1826 even suggests that corpus callosum might be uniting the two psyches, or so called the minds. And by the means of corpus callosum, both hemisphere can act together as a united and perceiving sensations. So uh, activity aroused by impressions on corresponding points in two hemispheres will therefore be able to produce one and same perceive the image, says the Neuburger. And, and, and the term of dominant and non-dominant uh, arose uh, lately, uh, following the uh, experiments and uh, studies of Brock as Wernicke, a preeminent role of the left hemisphere was given in language. Uh, and lately, uh, Geschwind would emphasize the critical role of left white matter connections for the language. So, thereby developing Broca, Wernicke, and Geschwind model of the language. Uh, connectomes, and the left uh, uh, hemisphere uh, was considered as dominant, uh, and the dogma of right, a non-dominant hemisphere, was at that time established. But lately, a cross aphasia cases of cross aphasia resulting from right lesion on the right handers have regularly been reported. So what is awake surgery is a type of surgical procedure which, which is performed under local anesthesia, keeping the patient intentionally conscious, alert during some portion of the whole surgical procedure through using brain mapping to preserve higher cortical eloquent uh, functions of cerebral hemisphere. So the reasons to apply uh, brain mapping is uh, obviously uh, it facilitates the resection of needed uh, tumor volume, sparing eloquent cortex and subcortical pathways. Uh, it is well tolerated by patients and high satisfaction rate has been reported. It is robust, versatile, decreased iatrogenic neurological injury, improving the health healthcare resource utilization, less expenses for general anesthesia, and can be... Uh, it is feasible in even low resource settings also. Uh, effective way of communication through uh, 
awake procedure is doctor-patient relationship, reduces recovery time. So what are the eloquent brain areas? Uh, so we know that there are uh, many eloquent areas on the left hemisphere. Uh, basically, it is the language area of the motor speech, it's a Broca's area and, uh, and the Wernicke's area on the left posterior sides of the uh, superior temporal gyrus and precentral cortex mm, and the precentral gyrus and premotor area and, and prefrontal cortex, which is usually uh, divided into supplementary motor area and premotor cortex. And many other areas like visual cortex, parietal areas also considered as uh, eloquent cortex. And then subcortical level, we can see many connectomes of the um, uh, different cortical sites of the hemispheres like uh, superior longitudinal fascicle, which is uh, lately uh, classified into three types and the frontal Aslan tract and arcuate fascicles and inferior frontal occipital fascicles, inferior uh, longitudinal fascicles and many other. And also internal capsule and thalamic areas also considered as eloquent brain areas. In the MRI, uh, there is an interesting landmark of M-shaped uh, cortex, which is uh, orbital, triangular, and um, opercular parts of the inferior frontal gyrus, and also Wernicke's area, which is not very uh, clearly uh, demarcated and, and can be only uh, de determined by the using of brain mapping. So basic eloquent uh, cognitive functions so far we have uh, listed, they are speaking, perceiving, reading, calculating, memorizing, move. The movement and sensation, anything else can be added to this list. The, most of the neurosurgeon are aware of these uh, enlisted um, functions of the brain, but there are many functions of the right hemisphere, like uh, modulation of the eloquent functions. So the basic functions of the right hemisphere is executive function, social cognitive behavior, visual spatial cognition, empathy, uh, the ability to show the empathy and theory of mind, the ability to understand the other person's perspective acts. So uh, the executive functions is, is kind of umbrella term. So it is encompassing all the these enlisted um, functions of the brain, like planning, use of strategies, problem solving, abstractions, logic, inhibition of the certain opinion, and dominating the uh, perspective op opinion and working memory switching memory, allocating the attention, maintaining the attention, judging, reasoning, estimation, emotional control. These all functions, which are considered a crucial uh, in adaptation of the person in the society uh, should not be neglected. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, right hemisphere should not be uh, called as a non-dominant hemisphere. So there is, but anatomical studies uh, for the um, each of the subcortical tracts has been done. The reports of asymmetrical findings of arcuate fasciculus. Uh, some authors have reported the existence of uh, right arcuate fasciculus only in forty percent of cases, uh, whereas other reporters uh, reported in all the other their patients. The most uh, post-mortem studies reported no significant difference between right and left white matter fascicles, neither in volume nor in cortical connections. But this is, remains still controversial. For, for the superior longitudinal fascicle, uh, many anatomical studies showing the asymmetry in volume, uh, the right-sided uh, superior longitudinal fascicle as a whole was more voluminous than the left in two uh, studies. 
but this is also non-consensual. However, uh, however uh, as other researchers found uh, superior longitudinal fascicles to subcomponents lateralization to be dominant in the left hemisphere. So uh, that's maybe due to the functionality uh, and the VAN and other, uh, in the other hand, found a slight asymmetric difference in, in this fascicle uh, tended to be more uh, voluminous in the right hemispheric dominance. The same uh, studies in frontal Aslan tract, um, and there is enough data for the left as, uh, frontal Aslan tract, but not much known for the right one. Uh, recent anatomical studies have described uh, as a, a symmetric white matter tract connecting pre-supplementary motor area and supplementary motor area with superior frontal gyrus and inferior frontal gyrus. Each bundle has same diameter and diffusion characteristics on both sides, as uh, the fat is medial and orthogonal to superior longitudinal fascicles and uh, following the par parallel trajectory. So uh, one of the authors, uh, Villas Boss, and with Professor Hugh Defoe, uh, wrote an article challenging the myth of a right non-dominant hemisphere. Um, where they have evaluated uh, different cortical functions of the right hemisphere in 231 patients who underwent awake craniotomy and the evaluating the neuroplasticity potential of uh, brain damaged patients. And they have elaborated this uh, probabilistic atlas of functional plasticity uh, where the several uh, kinds of symptoms occurred during the uh, uh, direct electrical stimulation. And they have made this uh, probabilistic atlas of the uh, different uh, types of uh, disorders during the right-sided brain mapping. So this, uh, the basic indications, these are the basic indications for the uh, left hemisphere lesions. Um, so anatomically, it is uh, usually located um, in a speech area like language cortex and motor cortex, sensory cortex. Physiologically, it's a different kind of epilepsy surgery, stereotactic brain biopsy and triclostomy. Uh, so we can add to the, the list of indications, right hemispheric uh, features like <clears throat> location uh, of the same area of the brain on the right side. So inferior frontal gyrus, superior temporal gyro, temporal parietal junction, and on the right hemisphere, just identical to Broca's and Wernicke's area, premotor cortex, prefrontal cortex, supplementary motor area, and even uh, corpus callosum. Uh, in much cases, uh, uh, patients developed corpus callosum tumors, which are uh, infiltrating to the uh, singular area, which is also considered as a uh, eloquent cortex. And the exclusion criteria is uh, well known. There's uh, the patient who cannot communicate, delirious and debilitated, psychologically instable. Uh, the younger patients uh, than 11, in some articles, it shows that even in nine years old, there has been, there has been uh, doing the away craniotomy. And tumor location, supratentorial, mostly. And tumor type is um, um, highly vascular and large volume cannot be tolerated for away craniotomy because of high blood loss possibility and comorbidities like sleep apnea, apnea syndrome and obese patients are not uh, indicated for this kind of procedure. And also inexperienced specialists are also in this criterion. So uh, here uh, I just drawn the, this uh, colorful diagram with the subcortical tracts uh, showing the uh, how uh, visual spatial cognition and social cognition is uh, formed. Um, so the uh, the the yellow lines is basically it's uh, superior lateral 
uh, superior longitudinal testicles. Um, from ventral to dorsal, it's like three to one. Um, and the third uh, superior lateral testicle is considered as, uh, in some, it is a, bit, a little bit controversial, but uh, some authors consider it's, it's as a arcuate fascicle. Some say it's a super, superior longitudinal fascicle third type. So it is basically connecting the um, inferior frontal gyrus with the superior temporal gyrus, posterior aspects of it. And, and the green line is inferior front occipital fascicles, which is uh, basically uh, connecting the um, prefrontal cortex all the way um, passing through the temporal, deep temporal areas and going to the uh, visual cortex, which is obviously associated with the visual spatial cognition, uh, facial uh, recognition. So, uh, and the other uh, tract is uh, uncinate fascicles, which, which is, uh, connecting the uh, orbitofrontal cortex with the uh, pole of the temporal cortex. So uh, going in through the uh, frontal cortex, um, this is the uh, how special uh, cognition and visual special cognition um, mediated. Uh, ventral front frontal cortex consists of uh, middle frontal gyrus, inferior frontal gyrus, and medial ventral prefrontal cortex is responsible to emotions, social cognition, facial emotion cognition, empathy, prosody, and theory of mind. And the medial ventral uh, prefrontal cortex can be seen in this uh, picture very good. So um, this is the basic area. You can see the uh, it is going even to the singular cortex. So it is responsible to the uh, even consciousness. This is how uh, the special neglect uh, can be um, generated. So uh, ventral uh, frontal cortex and um, a temporal parietal junction is closely uh, associated and connected with uh, superior longitudinal fascicles, second and third type, uh, and inferior frontal occipital fascicles with the visual cortex. So uh, connecting these um, inferior uh, parietal lobule with a, a ventral frontal cortex. Uh, a person identifies its own uh, spatial position and the others uh, from the perspective of its personal position, it will be egocentric and from, from the perspective of the other uh, space, it will be allocentric. So uh, as the lesion goes to the uh, occipital parts of the brain on the right side, uh, the patient uh, neglects usually the space, space uh, the right, uh, the left or right part of the space, and and the lesion. If lesion goes to the uh, superior temporal gyrus or this direction, so the patient may neglect its own half hemi body, like uh, not knowing the, not being aware of the uh, part of his body. So this table I have uh, collected from the data data I've been studying from the these articles. So basically, it was seven uh, seven functions of the uh, fun uh, right hemisphere and correlated gyrus and responsible subcortical tracts, visual visual spatial cognition. And I'm not going into every uh, each of these. Um, detail in detail. So uh, I want to highlight that there are many testing methods have been uh, generated so far, but uh, these tests, testing methods are basically in the bedside, not um, 
adapted to the uh, intraoperative assessment. So you can see the uh, um, difference of the number, uh, the only line by section test, test and target cancellation test can be used to monitor uh, ventral frontal cortex um, visual spatial cognition in intraoperatively during awake surgery. Uh, and the same can be done uh, to the uh, medial ventral prefrontal cortex to, uh, to uh, assess the social cognition of the, or theory of mind uh, using the reading in the mind, reading the mind in the eyes test. And the Ekman phase is emotional test, uh, facial emotion ex expression testing. Uh, and there is also a, a testing of executive functions like Stroop test. Uh, and the only one is have been uh, searching for the different other types of tests, but uh, the most popularized test was strip test for the executive functions. So this is the strip test. Uh, the uh, most of the neurosurgeons are aware of this. So uh, there is a congruent and incongruent uh, information for the patients uh, as patients. Uh, so uh, if the patient's uh, names the uh, um, the sentence with the correct color and the correct uh, according to the color. Uh, so the strip test is uh, there's a strip uh, effect, so called. So if the patient's delays in the answer, uh, it is positive and. And then assessment, this assessment is important to evaluate the executive function. So there is a role of uh, right hemisphere in neuroplasticity. Uh, all uh, is well known for the, uh, the, the plasticity is very uh, developed, very much developed in, in infants, infancy period. Uh, but it's distinguished from the plasticity from adulthood, its magnitude and ease of triggering. and. Um, through the plasticity, this inhibition of non-dominant hemisphere when brain lesions affect the dominant hemisphere. And the speed of rehabilitation, however, it's much slow, it's much slower. Uh, and structural stability overcomes the plasticity in the adult brain. So the structure already has been established in the certain state, and the plasticity is more cumbersome. Uh, and it's widely known that neuronal regeneration is poor in central nervous system in mammals, uh, more specifically considering the, that glial scars inhibit uh, axonal regeneration while limiting the lesion size and re reducing the inflammation. So this is the, the role of uh, right hemisphere in neuroplasticity, compensatory role and the non-dominant hemisphere uh, interacting as a reserve compensation for any remaining language processing. Uh, language production region known as Broca's area in inferior frontal gyrus, bidirectional linked with the posterior superior temporal region, VR crit fascicles and adjacent supramarginal angular gyri, inferior frontal lobule, and respectively other fascicles. So, uh, the importance is uh, when patients develop uh, aphasia on the, due to the lesion of the uh, left hemisphere, left frontal temporal region, uh, there is a compensatory role for uh, right uh, hemisphere. Uh, so it has been established uh, through subcortical networks uh, that it, the right hemisphere uh, can take some portions of the function, not 100%, but it takes the function. Uh, so the role of compensate, compensation is well established. Uh, there is so-called SMA syndrome, uh, which is supplementary motor area syndrome, uh, is developing contralateral hemicorporeal akinesia uh, associated with mutism and dominant hemisphere for language. Uh, tend, it, it tends to recover spontaneously, uh, except for fine movement skills by manual coordination, sometimes onset of abnormal movements. So this recovery of this SMA syndrome, even in, incomplete, is made possible thanks to post-lesional brain plasticity 
process, process in particular based on the recruitment of the contralateral uh, some supplementary motor area from the right side. So there is a, a role in the um, visual cortex in the right inferior longitudinal fascicles. Stimulating right inferior longitudinal fascicles may cause left visual hemagnosia, which is a result of disruption of occipital visual input and fusiform gyrus. So it supports the key role of inf inferior longitudinal fasciculus in visual recognition in the right hemisphere. As for stimulation of SLF2 and supramarginal gyrus cause disturbance in spatial cognition rightward deviation by and line bisection test. So it's all justified the right hemisphere frontal network has a pivotal role in spatial awareness and visual sign processing. So um, there is also a role of uh, the language function that, that has already uh, talked. So there, there are intraoperative testing methods. Uh, so I have also talked about this. There are many, but uh, the less is used in intraoperative assessment, like strip test, uh, picture naming test, task, uh, pyramid and palm tree test, synchronized task, the left arm, uh, to check the uh, uh, multitasking capability. Line bisection task is the best used to check the spatial cognition unilateral neglect. In the modified version of reading the mind in the eyes test, check mentalizing social cognitive function that enables human being to attribute mental stat states to the others, uh, which is very interesting uh, function of the brain. So, um, dogmatic concept of localizationism of uh, hemispheric dominance and fixed understanding of right hemisphere as a non-dominant has led most neurosurgeons to underestimate its functional significance. Uh, predominant cases of uh, right hemispheric lesions are being operated under general anesthesia. Even so far, uh, there are no many uh, cases of uh, right hemispheric awake uh, surgery papers have found like not more than 20 or 30 papers that are indicating the role of awake craniotomy in the right hemisphere. So above, above mentioned studies using the direct electrical stimulation of uh, right hemisphere by many authors showed the considerable inter-individual structural and functional peculiarity and variability in cortical level, which is justified by persistence of variety of complex networking, white matter tracts. So uh, clear that clearly illuminate us to understand the fact of no single function is mediated by one single cortical area, but it's result of many interactions of large scale sub circuits, subcortical tracts. So concluding the awake craniotomy uh, with intraoperative electrostimulation mapping in gliomas of uh, non-dominant right hemisphere of the brain is an indispensable tool to maintain higher cognitive functions of right hemisphere. At the same time, uh, the term non-dominant is not entirely suitable for right hemisphere. Uh, and since it's plays an important significant role in individual and social life of the human being, providing basic and replaceable cognitive functions, the loss of which lead a nervous deterioration of uh, quality of life. So in the, in the end, uh, I want to share, um, since there is no so much case of right hemispheric uh, awake craniotomy cases. So in Nago University, I found only one case of uh, right frontal lobe tumor, a case a 32 year old male uh, came to, with complaining to the seizures, uh, previously having been, have been taken the levetiracetam. So in the history of present illness in eight, uh, it's January 2023, he had a generalized uh, seizure for the first time in his life and visited nearby hospital. So intracranial lesion was uh, pointed out and had CT in February had MRI performed nearby hospital. So it was right frontal lobe tumor. In March, um, 
he visited Nagoya University and uh, they decided to do away craniotomy. So this is the basically the tumor location, well delineated tumor, uh, locating the um, mostly uh, right prefrontal cortex. So you can see the uh, right frontal acid tract is uh, compressed by the tumor. Surgical video. Opening the door. Yeah. Uh, strip test uh, uh, during the resection of the frontal lobe tumor. It's parallel there with uh, the different kind of uh, picture naming test. Uh, Throughout the surgery. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the procedure, as a control. Okay, <laughs> Again, this is the general procedure how it was done. Thank you so much for your attention and patience. Thank you Dilshad for this very uh, complete presentation about uh, uh, awake craniotomy uh, in the right hemisphere. So we can open the discussion now. Uh, is there uh, any question? Uh, I see Dr. Mayank Nakipuria. Please, Mayank. Uh, actually, uh, it was very enlightening talk, uh, Dr. Delshaw. Thank you so much. Uh, we truly come to know that even the right side of the brain is so eloquent and we should not ignore it. Uh, and uh, it's not a question, actually, just comment that uh, previously in my institute, we used to do right side or non-dominant hemisphere, uh, asleep motor monitoring. But uh, here in this presentation, I think Dr. Dilshaw is suggesting to do other functions other than motor also and awake uh, for non-dominant hemisphere. So uh, what uh, the other functions other than motor do you check in uh, non-dominant hemisphere? Like in this case that uh, you did awake, what other functions did you look for? Um, thank you so much, Dr. Bayang. So, for this question, <clears throat> so uh, uh, mapping the uh, even the right sided uh, lesions on the right side hemisphere, uh, as you said, the mapping of motor cortex, yes, it is important. Um, by, by the authors like Hugh Defoe and many others, it has been. Um, documented that even motor function has a uh, very different uh, complicated uh, sub functions like uh, the complicated motor functions 
like multitasking uh, cannot be assessed during only uh, as, uh, asleep motor uh, mapping. Uh, like uh, patient cannot uh, use its supplementary motor area. You cannot assess supplementary motor area and premotor cortex, prefrontal cortex using a sleep motor mapping. So uh, the awake uh, craniotomy helps in this regard. And, and not only the motor function, there are many functions of the uh, uh, right hemisphere, like even, even in the right frontal lobe, there is uh, executive functions like uh, the previous, the last video I have shown, I have showed uh, using the strip test uh, to, to how patients analyze, uh, how a patient uses his, uh, his logic, uh, the attention, uh, which is crucial uh, in social adaptation. Um, these functions are not well assessed in post-operative periods, even in post-operative period, uh, both in the pre-operatively. So the, these functions are like in the shadow. Mm. So we have to be aware of these functions, uh, going deep into these functions. Uh, so it's the Neuro neurosurgery, where the, where the neurosurgery meets the neurocognitive science. So we have to be, we have to treat the patient as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dilshud. Yes, I really think uh, uh, your talk uh, uh, enlightened uh, the importance of a teamwork uh, to do this kind of surgeries. Uh, the need for a very good uh, uh, neurocognitive team helping us in the OR. Uh, I also have a question for you, or I request you a comment, because, uh, of course, uh, uh, the right hemisphere is something more mysterious uh, compared to the left hemisphere in this kind of surgeries. Uh, there are some surgeons like uh, Hugh Dufault, uh, who are very strong supporters of uh, awake craniotomy also when you perform surgery in the right hemisphere. But there are some uh, functions uh, like the visuospatial uh, cognition uh, or uh, the language processing, uh, which are uh, somehow uh, influenced by the right hemisphere and which can be not easily monitored, but still uh, it's feasible to, to monitor them during surgery. But there are some other functions like uh, emotions like uh, 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 social uh, relations, uh, uh, theory of mind, uh, which depend uh, on the right hemisphere and which are not so obvious to be monitored. So I think this is the current frontier of this kind of surgery. I know uh, Professor Dufault is uh, uh, working on this topic. I would like to ask your uh, opinion, a comment about that, maybe also your experience uh, at the Nagoya uh, University about this specific uh, topic. Yeah, that's very interesting uh, part of the uh, right hemisphere. Uh, actually, there has been uh, many reports of uh, monitoring of the visuospatial cognition, like line bisection uh, tasks um, uh, and, and different kinds, but they are not very... Uh, uh, feasible uh, to use during intraoperative mapping, which is which makes it a little bit problematic. So, uh, so why these kind of surgeries? Uh, I mean, the awake surgery on the right hemisphere is mostly neglected by by the reason of these uh, uh, difficulties in assessment of these functions. Like theory of mind is very difficult to monitor during awake procedure. And even uh, emotional recognition uh, phase, uh, emotional recognition, uh, there is only like Ekman's phase test, uh, which is uh, used, but not 100% uh, persuasive in its nature. Uh, that There should be uh, many uh, randomized trials, I think, uh, should be done in this uh, field of neurosurgery. So the, uh, Professor Defoe's work has been doing an influential, very like uh, very much doing in this field. Uh, 
Yes, uh, and other uh, several authors have been reporting, but still, I think uh, that this direction should be more developed. Thank you, Disha. Dr. Hari. Uh, yes. Uh, hi, Dr. Richard. Yeah, thank you. Excellent talk. Uh, very new and challenging topic. I was just curious to know what test did you use the video which you showed us showing the uh, right uh, sided uh, awake craniotomy. So, what clinical test did you use except for the stroop test? Did you use any other tests also? Um, basically, it's a general language task like picture naming, counting. Uh, number counting tasks uh, in in the very video uh, I have shown, uh, but there is other tasks like uh, line bisection task uh, and many uh, fa facial rec famous face recognition tasks uh, which can be used. It depends on the location of the tumor, uh, the lesion where it's located. If it's near to the uh, parietal occipital region, then Probably it's uh, the facial recognition and theory of mind uh, should be um, disturbed. And if it's on basically in the prefrontal and frontal cortex, then it's mostly uh, executive functions should be assessed. Yeah. And so in this case, you assessed only executive functions? Yes, because it's a prefrontal cortex glioma. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I don't know if uh, Professor Kawashima uh, is still uh, here and wants to uh, give a comment about this topic. Otherwise, uh, uh, maybe Professor Yoko Kato. Uh, question, as I say, you like this gun? So mm -hmm. this was thank you very much. So very basic things. How much was I say? You have any comment for the presentation? Yes, th thank you very much. It's it's very a uh, good uh, for, for uh, good teaching and uh, uh, good experience to uh, take part in this uh, conference. And uh, I'm very happy to share my experience and. Uh, uh, Condolences with you, heart this time, and uh, it's very nice for me. Thank you very much. As I said, do you have a okay. team, such kind of the awake surgery, the team for glioma? Uh, yes. Oh, uh, in, in my institute, we, we cannot do the uh, awake surgery because uh, uh, my institute uh, have not so good case for glioma. You, you know the uh, main hospital of our uh, university have uh, many uh, cases, but uh, I'm not so experienced for such a, uh, a cases. So usually, how long does it take? So the average hours. Oh, uh, 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 generally it's uh, basically five or six hours, but depends on the tumor, the, uh, depending on the tumor location and the, uh, how big is the tumor. If it's a smaller tumor, then probably less hours. If it's big, then more hours, uh, but not more than like six, seven hours, not more than, yeah. Thank you very much. So sometimes that trauma case, sometimes we removed the right frontal lobe, lobe mm. extension, something like that. So maybe we should be very careful because there's so many function uh, in the yeah. right, in the right hemisphere. Yeah. Thank you. We learned a lot from your lecture. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. Uh, this yeah, I think, Dr. Liu, you, you have a question. Oh, you? <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. Uh, uh, Prof. Uh, Disha, probably I want to ask uh, whether when you do a cortical stimulation and subcortical stimulation, is there any difference in terms of setting? 
for the cortical uh-huh. and subcortical. You show uh-huh. the cortical stimulation. Subsequently, yep. uh, what matter uh, stimulation for deep cortical? Uh, deep, uh, sorry, subcortical stimulation. Is there any uh-huh. difference? Uh, difference in basically in in it's in the purpose uh, because cortical stimulation by cortical stimulation you find the cortical centers, uh, which is most probably done with bipolar uh, stimulator. Uh, and the subcortical stimulation, you have to find find out the uh, subcortical tracts, uh, which have shown like uh, superior longitudinal, frontal aslant, arcuate fascicles, many others, uh, which can be done using the monopolar and bipolar stimulators. It depends on the uh, institution's practice uh, and the uh, how the tumor is, how deep the tumor is located. Thank you. Thank you, Liu, for the question. Uh, and thank you, Dilshad, for the very nice presentation. Uh, so I think we can uh, uh, end this session. Uh, thank you to both of our uh, speakers, Professor Kawashima and Dr. Uh, Mamadaliev, for uh, wonderful uh, presentations and discussions. I want to thank uh, uh, my uh, co-moderator, Ishu Bijnoi, who had unfortunately to leave for an, an emergency at hospital. Uh, and thank you to Dr. Liu, uh, Dr. Raja for uh, always supporting. And of course, uh, to Professor Yoko Kato. Uh, thank you very much to all of you. Good night. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.